Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Best Life and Beyond Disneyland Resort. Today, a brand new restaurant's opening. Tiana's Palace in New Orleans Square. This is based on the Princess and the Frog movie. All sorts of changes happening at the Disneyland Resort according to that movie. Yes, we're so excited. We're gonna order a bunch of things that are on the menu, give them our honest review. We're also gonna take a look inside of the restaurant and see what it's like inside Tiana's Palace. <music> Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Good afternoon. Welcome to a beautiful day here at Disneyland and opening day for Tiana's Palace. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's hear it. You betcha. Well, we're the Jambalaya Jazz Band. We make our home right here in New Orleans Square, and we're happy to play a little bit of jazz music for you today. Hope you're off to a great start. Enjoy the, the rest of the day. All I can tell you is I am so glad we got a mobile order uh, because this line is insane. Take a look at the canopy, unreal. We knew this was gonna be cool, but the colors, oh man, in the sunlight, that pastel yellow, that is so awesome. And before we head into Tiana's, I just wanna note how much the beautiful detail on the outside, you've got this uh, awesome window here right next to where the mobile order pickup is. I love how they put all the beignets in there. I really like the extra detail in the, the tribute to New Orleans with the king cake being displayed. And now while we're inside of Tiana's Palace, can we just take a moment to say how incredible this looks in here. I love all the lighting fixtures, the pictures. It really gives you the story of Tiana and how hard she worked to get her restaurant and her history with her family. One of my favorite details though has to be the little stars of Ray and Evangeline over there behind the food counter. And I love the fact that they have the hats and the coats on the wall that it yeah. makes it feel like they're really here and, yeah. and they're, they're back there, you know, uh, just really awesome job on the interior. And as we said, we're getting our mobile order and it's just to the left of the main entrance over here. You'll see this arch and we got our bags and because it was so crowded over there we came over to the uh, pelicans landing area which is just adjacent uh to where the restaurant is because you can see the restaurant right over there and you can watch the mark twain go by it's kind of perfect I, I have to say um and in nice proximity a little more uh, breeze here on the water today because it's pretty hot we're taking a look at the menu here it looks really cool yeah we're starting with dessert first we got a house filled beignet it's featuring a lemon icebox pie filling topped with a lemon glaze for 449 the entrees are the house gumbo with chicken and dewy sausage and heirloom rice, $16.99 for that. And a vegetarian option is the seven greens gumbo. It's white uh, beans, okra, yam, sweet potatoes, $14.49 for that. They also have the seven greens gumbo with chicken and andouille sausage with white beans, okra, pretty much the same toppings, uh, $16.99 for that. Something else we're gonna be trying today is the Cajun spiced half chicken. It's got a barbecue sauce and it's served with baked macaroni and cheese with wholesome. $19.49 for that. We also got the muffaletta sandwich. That's a mortadella and a bunch of cuts there. It's on a sesame seed bread with red beans and rice. $14.99 for that. And of course, we're gonna be trying the beef po'boy sandwich. It's slow cooked beef with gravy. Looks really good. Also served with red beans and rice. $15.99 for that. They also have the shrimp and grits that weren't available when I placed my mobile order. So we'll have to try that next time. $17.49 for that. You also have a side of buttermilk cornbread and they have a specialty coffee that we're gonna be trying and it has has the chicory with the cold brew, so we're gonna have that today. We also have a kids menu where you can also get baked mac and cheese, ham and cheese sandwich, and a little chicken drumstick. Why does the baked macaroni by itself have to be just for the kids? I'm just kidding. All right, so Katie got this cold brew. Here it is, yes. uh, it's already mixed up. Yeah, and I took a little sip, but I'm gonna let you know my thoughts. So I love uh, a chicory in a coffee. This is really, really strong coffee. If you're not used to strong coffee, you probably won't like this but I think it's absolutely delicious. I don't like sweet, sweet coffee, and this is perfect for me. So if you want a sweeter coffee, I would probably say like go to Starbucks or Galaxy's Edge, but this is perfect for me, 10 out of 10. Okay, we have to start off with the house gumbo because this is Tiana's specialty next to her beignets. We've been waiting for this. Yes, uh, I'm a little nervous because I am a spice wimp. I'm gonna go into it telling you that. So if I say it's spicy, know that Again, you're hearing it from a spice wimp. I'm gonna try it with the rice because I feel like that'll, that'll kind of help, help yeah. my case. But sure. look at this beautiful looking chicken. Looks so tender, the sausage. I'm gonna try to get a little 
piece of chicken with my bite. We all know Tiana likes to add a, a couple shots of Tabasco in it, so that's what I'm scared of, but here we go. Mmm. Definitely got a kick. <laughs> right off the bat. But let me just tell you, I know enough to tell you the flavor is amazing to me. I think it's really, really good. Again, you can't take this as like, we're going down to New Orleans and we're having some really authentic food. This is a theme park, it's Disneyland. So yeah. on the Disneyland theme park food scale, this is very good. I feel like if you like a little bit of spice, Flavor-wise, I think this is delicious. So clean out the uh, sinuses, huh? It sure will. I'm having another bite with some more rice. Mm-hmm. That's really good. All right, Spence is not a spice wimp like myself. Let's see what he thinks. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a l I can tolerate it a little bit more. Not, not yeah. much more, but let's see. Oh, he already needed a drink. What does that tell you? Yeah, it's really good. I, I don't see it as being uh, overly spicy because it doesn't have that like lasting power sometimes certain spices have levels where they start and then they kick into gear it, it, you know after a little bit of time this thing kind of initially has a little spice and then it kind of starts to waver but let me take another bite just in case because sometimes you could get a, a soft bite so it's mild it's you know uh, Disney spicy and some things at Disney are they're getting spicier but this this is good I think this is tolerable I mean here's my thing is <laughs> you know it's gonna be spicy it's right. gonna go okay Usually it's in the name, spicy gumbo. Yeah. Um, on that scale, it's pretty mellow. True. Um, would I get it again? Um, I don't know. I think overall for what it is, I think people will really like this. Me too. Yeah. All right, moving on to the Cajun spiced half chicken. Ooh. We've uh, dissected a little piece here to show you. Look at that. So you can see. Wow, it comes with uh, these pickled vegetables. Which, by the way, I already ate a bite of one, and oh my gosh, I could just eat a whole plate of that. Mac and cheese, you're welcome. Yes, looks good uh, from the first inspection, but I will have to dive deeper. Coleslaw, always a fan favorite. So all in all, it's a, it's a pretty nice meal. Uh, yeah. This would be this would be so great before uh, Fantasmic or something, oh, yeah. uh, if Fantasmic were around. Yeah. Uh, we're hearing some construction noise today from the island, so they're they're working hard over there uh, trying to get it back. But uh, in the meantime, this looks really good. I peeled off the skin because it's a little too fatty for me, but I peeled, I got some of the seasoning so I can properly taste it. Let's see, I can definitely tell you this is not dry chicken because it's bone in and you know, it was always pretty good over there, but I think I have a feeling just by smelling this, it's gonna be better. So let's see how it is. That's great. Honestly, the seasoning is sweet and spicy, but also flavorful. I, I think this is delicious. It does have a little bit of a kick to it, but nothing like that gumbo. I think this is uh, really good. All right, let's see Spencer's review of the chicken. The chicken, yes. Uh, not dry at all, like yeah. the complete opposite. Right. A lot of flavor. Yep. Really good right off the bat. I want to try one of these pickled uh, cucumbers, maybe? Mm. Right? I feel like that is the highlight, kind of. We're so weird. That's really good. Yeah, I, I got a little scared it was going to be like jalapenos or something, but it's actually, that's an onion. We're going to go coleslaw. We're going to lead up to the map. We're going to like build, okay. build to this right. beautiful thing. All right, here we go. I feel like it's just going to be basic coleslaw, you know, just mm, my just no. my opinion. There is a little bit of an apple flavor in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's subtle, so it's not like overpowering, but like you can definitely taste it. And that's, you know, coleslaw, if you're to just get it at a deli regular, it doesn't have that. that yeah, this is nice. Mayonnaise. See if you agree with me. I don't know. Okay. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like. I don't like coleslaw normally. Yeah, here. but I think you might like this because you do like the, the pickled vegetables. I do vegetables, like a so. little, yeah. Mm. That is good. You're right. There is a subtle, there is a subtle kind of apple-y flavor. Yeah. Maybe it's just because of what we've eaten, but. I thought so, but I think it's there. I don't know if I, in, I shouldn't have said something and so, you know. Yeah, and see if I would have caught have been, it. I might have induced your uh, reaction. You might have been looking for apple, but I don't know. Maybe. Either it way, it's really been. good. It's really good. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for from the mac and cheese connoisseur himself, Spencer, you're even wearing mac and cheese colors today. I am. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Tiana and the whole family for making this this happen. Uh, I've been looking forward to this moment specifically the whole time. Uh, Tiana and I will have a conversation about this at some point. I'm going to tell you how I how I feel because I I have good 
I have a good thought that this is going to be good. So. And he went in for another bite. And he's going in for another bite, everyone. Upon, like, I had took a couple bites. I had to make sure uh, because the top had, like, a nice little crispy layer, which I love, right? But when you get into the heart of it, it's actually, like, that nice, you know, warm, soft, kind of homemade style. Um, really good job on it. I, I like it. I think it's great. It's I, That's all I can say, really, is it's got a homemade vibe. It, it really feels like somebody made a batch and brought it in, you know? Yeah. So uh, cheers. I'm going to have another bite. I had a bite too, and I think it is very good. I like that it's got a little more flavor to it. It's it's more on the dry side, but it's still, don't let that fool you because it's still got some good flavor to it. All in all, I'd say I'd give this meal a nine and a half out of 10. I would agree with that. Um, would you get this again? Yeah. I would too. I would split this with you. I would too. But I would have to make a deal about the mac and cheese so that I could have all of that. Yeah, you get all the mac. And well, then, then get I get all these. Yeah, that would be the deal. And then maybe yeah. certain nights we could split it all. But yeah. I am also claiming best mac and cheese at Disneyland Resort. Okay. All right. That's a bold uh, statement, but anybody, we'll take it. Yeah, if anybody wants to challenge it, please, I welcome it. And I, I would love to be proved wrong because that means I get to taste more, more mac, mac and cheese. cheese. <laughs> so uh, the challenge has been... All right. <laughs> 10 out of 10 for the barbecue. Or 10 out of 10, afternoon. we get it again. And like you said, 9 out of 9.5 uh, rating or whatever. Yeah, it's not uh, a perfect meal, but it's pretty but darn close. Pretty, pretty good. So good on you, Tiana. Next thing. Uh, All right, more pickles. Dude, we're stoked. This is the muffaletta sandwich. It is mortadella, salami, rosemary, ham, cheddar, provolone, and house-made olive relish on a toasted New Orleans sesame seed bread served with red beans and rice and the house-made pickles that we love so much. As Katie says, for science. For science. It's actually pretty darn good. It's not like my favorite sandwich, but I'm not mad at it. Like oh. it's definitely got like a, a flavorful, zesty zing to it. Okay, I had a feeling it would. I mean, honestly, I was expect what I was expecting. This is not what I was expecting. Does cool. that make sense? Like. You're pleasantly oh, surprised? Pleasantly surprised. Ah, it's, very it's good. It's pretty darn good. It still is a little too meaty for me. I would take off of half of the meat uh, for my preference, but I'm not mad at this. I think, I feel like that's pretty darn good. There's cheese a boot. Oh, cheese a boot. No, it was like attached to the bottom. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go. Hey, you're right. That's pretty darn good. Pleasantly surprised, right? The slices of meat are so thin that. It's a, when you bite into it, every, it's just a really nice uh, texture. Yeah, it's not like what I was expecting because, again, we just, like, for instance, when we go to the deli counter yeah. and we get ourselves turkey or, or sliced chicken, we get it shaved. Yeah. That's how thin we like it. So really not bad. And the olives, I thought that was going to be super, super, like, but it's, olive -y. The lemon overpowers it a little bit. Yeah, the citrus or whatever that is. Because I am not a big olive person either. I always wanted to be. I've said this before in the videos. I love olives. I always wanted to be an olive person and go to the olive bar at Kelson's and, like, you know, know what I'm doing and, yeah. and enjoy it because it looks like a really cool lifestyle to be an olive person. Oh, my gosh. But See, I like the olives. I eat the olives off of your drink, but I don't like them like right. that. Like, I well, don't like them on, like, a seat, you know, like that. Well, that's the thing, too. And martinis, it always... You know, in the movies they portray it, it looks, olives look so good when people eat them from martinis, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like them, so I give them to Katie and I, we water them off, <laughs> so yep. the alcohol's off there. But uh, anyways, my point is, uh, I wish I could be an olive person. Yeah, really so don't, this is let, really good. don't let the olive and, you know, how much it is in there, don't let that scare you because this sandwich, I'd say, is delicious. Now, I'm curious what you think of the, the red beans and rice, because that to me, I would just get a whole bowl of that. I feel like so far, we're doing pretty good. Let's see how the red beans and rice is. Mm -hmm. A little smoky, because I think there might be bacon in there. Yes, there is. And it's got a little bit of a kick. Um, not as much as the, the gumbo but still really good. I think as long as you put one of these pickled things on there, that oh, gives you the trifecta. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's what did it. The balance of flavor has been achieved. But it does have a little kick. It almost tastes like the gumbo. A little bit now. Now it's settling in. Yeah, I need to eat some it, of it these It might be the, that there's sausage in there and that sausage is in the gumbo. Right. And the sausage is spicy, the andouille. Yeah. It's got a little. I'm just gonna have to eat all these pickles. <laughs> Here's gonna be my uh, pun of the day. And do we like it? <laughs> and, and we do. I'm putting some of these uh, oh, you're getting crazy. pickled vegetables on this because I feel like this will just, even though it's already kind of citrusy. You're plussing the situation. I'm plussing the situation. 
delicious. Mm -hmm. Is this the perfect bite? I think it is. Mark Twain in the background. Oh. Didn't that just like take it over the edge? If you get this and you don't do that, you're missing out on, on the flavors, you know? On greatness. I mean, you can experience those, you know, separately, yes, but man, when you combine them, something special. That's how you know, I think, that it's a good pairing in general is when you can combine everything on that plate and it still tastes good. Good Anya T. Anna, I'm she's, she's knocking it out of the park, Katie. I'm Batting just saying. Yeah. Okay, our next item here is the beef po' boy sandwich. This is slow cooked beef and gravy dressed with shredded lettuce, tomato, pickle, and mayonnaise on a toasted New Orleans French style bread uh, served with red beans and rice. And of course, house-made pickles. Jackpot with the house-made uh, pickles, like for, for everything, right? I'm just gonna try the, the beef because I don't like mayonnaise at all, like to the point where I, if it's on a sandwich, I just won't eat the sandwich. So let's just see how this beef is. But don't worry, Spencer will try the whole po' boy. Honestly, it's, it's, it's not the most flavorful. To me, I feel like it needs more salt or something. It needs something else to it, but it's not bad. Would I it save it if you put that on there? <laughs> I think anything would be saved with that on there. I like it. I'm just saying, like, Let's I wonder see. if it's meant Love to be. Love where your head's at. Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> How's my pickles? Put them on everything. <laughs> and do we agree? And we agree. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a bite of it, like, proper as it's supposed to be eaten. Let's see. This kind of replaced the sandwich that used to be over there, the French dip. Uh, it's similar, doesn't have as much flavor as the French dip did, Yeah. but it's similar in certain terms. I feel like it's the same bread, uh, but I think putting that the pickled vegetables on will will give it that flavor, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna agree. try that next. Okay. It's still good. I would get this again. I oh, like you it. Haven't, you didn't put the vegetables on it yet. No, I didn't. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, but I, I just ate it as it was intended, you know? Right. Um, and I like it, and I would get it again um, as a kind of a supplement and a replacement of the of the French dip. You know what? If this came with horseradish sauce, that's all they would have to do is, is add that to it, like as a side that you could, yeah. and it would really help. I know they probably wanted to have something that didn't have any spice in it. That's this. So if you're looking for something that's, you know, Katie would be able to eat this, although she doesn't like mayo. Yeah. Um, it's not as flavorful as I wish it could have been. Yeah, but it's an option for folks that don't want uh, spice at all. There's no spice in yeah, this. Yeah, there's no spice. At all, so that's that's good. All right, and I know it said dessert first, but we are last going to finish off with the house-filled beignet featuring lemon icebox pie filling topped with a lemon glaze. Now this has sat here a little bit because we ate, but it still is cold. It's very weird though that it's not, you know, the, the warm beignets that we're used to. Um, I do like the size and I like that you can order just one because I always thought it's too many to have a whole bag sometimes. But if um, you want to get the other ones, yes, those they are, still exist. They're at, still there. At Bar, yeah. Oh my gosh, okay, look at that filling in there. Ooh, wow, and it's now kind of melted. I won't lie, it tastes like a melted ice cream bar oh, type yeah, thing. Yeah. It would have been better to just have a nice, fresh, warm, fluffy beignet that um, just had its powdered sugar on it. I feel like it, it's doing too much. It doesn't need to, you know, we keep it simple. It's not bad. It tastes like a lemon donut. It's like melted ice cream. Also not understanding why they came out with lemon. Maybe there's a reason that I just don't know, but I kind of think it's fall and I love that like Disneyland kind of normally embraces like the seasonal flavors. And the fact that they didn't do that and it's like, it's screaming summer at me a little bit so I don't know I, I it's not bad but it's not like my favorite thing all right we're gonna uh, stroll New Orleans Square because why not this is this is Tiana's world now yes and, it is uh, and we're just living in it we are and you want to know it's so cool we uh, circled back into uh, Tiana's palace and she's actually over there meeting guests that are sitting down. And what was really cool was her cute new outfit. Honestly, she always looks good, but this new outfit, pretty perfect. I feel like the mint julep bar beignets are better and the ones in downtown Disney are even better. Those are the best. And I think this mint julep bar is now really improved because it's got like a little queue system right here. Yeah, this is nice. 
All right, Tiana's Palace, uh, that's a wrap. That was good. I feel like that was a success. Yeah, I think so too. So if you come to Disneyland and you give a try to some of the food over here at Tiana's Palace, let us know what you think. Leave a comment below. And if you haven't gone yet, leave a comment and let us know what are you most excited to try when you do eventually make it here. Mac and cheese. No, sorry. <laughs> I already had it. Anyways. We got some to go. Yeah, we got some to bring home. Uh, thank you to our Patreons. Thank you guys for watching. And we will see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.